Hey guys, welcome to The Shack, brought to you by LT Wright Knives and uh, all things knife around here at the Bay. It is a hot Friday. Uh, we've had a great week, a great summer all together. Hope you guys are having a great summer too. And we thought we would bring you some camping hacks that we do and also bushcraft shelter talk within this time frame. So we're going to have a good time. Uh, other than that, let's get introduced to IMLT. Mike, where can they find the podcast? Anywhere you listen to podcasts and on our website under the shack. Mm -hmm. And we did have a few stickers. Do we have any of those left? Are we going to get another batch? Uh, I believe we have a few left and we're definitely getting another batch. Okay. So here's what you do. You want a sticker. Um, I don't know yet. We'll have to think about that because... Mm -hmm. <laughs> like Michael, comment subscribe you're, you're gonna have to email mikey probably so we'll have to get back to you on that sticker thing but they're pretty cool i got one right here on my coffee cup i know you can't see it but it's it's pretty awesome we got some stickers and i'd like to figure out how we can get them to you without having to spend three dollars shipping so we, we'll figure something out but we do have some stickers right yep. all right so check out the podcast when you get a chance go back and listen to some of the back issue or episodes episodes I think one of our best episodes, we were discussing this the other day, was Grail Truck one? Grail Trucks and uh, Designing a Knife Part 1 oh. are our two most listened to episodes. Roger that. So Grail Trucks and Designing a Knife Part 1, if you haven't listened to those, jump on that bandwagon. Uh, the Grail Trucks was pretty cool. We're probably going to have to do another Grail Trucks because I know mine changed a little bit, but probably not. I might have... Might have changed one a little bit, only I've because they're getting too popular. I've built seven or fifteen since we did that episode. So, yeah. so there you have it. And so if anyway, you took the time to listen to Designing a Knife Part One. Commit hmm. to Part Two. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, right. Listen to Part Two because it's as as good for sure. Uh, we have some shows coming up. You guys are going to want to hang around for our Halloween episode. We've been uh, thinking our way through that we're going to have some fun with that one it's but we are in the spooky. mid hot summer right now we have all had a couple camping trips maybe under our belts so we're going to talk about that and let's see who's here today i am lt scooter here man on the inside tyler mike again nick and i'm sam so there you have it so the camping hacks well first of all i had to figure out I asked them this morning what they consider a hack because I just consider it things we do when we go camping. So I had to kind of get that clarified, which is fine. And then I wrote down some of the hacks that I do and some of the things that I think are kind of cool. And as far as bushcraft shelters, uh, we're going to probably have to defer to... Uh, Tyler, he was a professional uh, camper. Was he? <laughs> we'll have to probably let Scott lead that one off. Uh, I know for a fact he's built them and slept in them because I've been there. And he'll teach you how or talk to you how to debug it and everything because it's, it's pretty cool. So getting starting with camping hacks, uh, we probably have some that we overlap, I'm sure, to together. Now, first of all, we all kind of camp a little bit differently depending on what we're doing. So just like for uh, myself, I'll give you an example. If I'm running solo, we, I will generally go in a hammock. If the wife comes along, which I encourage her to all the time, we do a tent. And we have just upgraded to an easy up camping cube setup. Now I know that's a big bulky thing, but I'm gonna be honest, the wife and I do not uh, do some backpack lightweight camping. We, we go out and we camp and a lot of it ties to kayaking. So sometimes we end up in a campground, still have a lot of fun, but I'm gonna go over some of those things. So. If I'm running solo, probably hammock and some kind of a setup there, which we can talk about later. And if I'm taking the wife and the kayaks and stuff, we we will probably do the, the camping cube. We've had it out in hot, hot weather so far and super rainy weather so far. I am a fan. Uh, we'll just say that. So, uh, Scott, defer in your way. How, how For, just before we get into cap or, or hacks, like what's your general rig in general? How do you camp, Scott? How do you camp? Uh, it depends how many people are going, I guess. I have everything from a sleeping bag and a cot and a heat shield for just me to, uh, well, I had a rooftop tent, sold that, but we have a, an awning off the side of the truck 
that we can attach a zip on room. Oh, do you have the room for that too? Yep. Awesome. With a zip in floor. It's big enough for two cots and all your crap. Is that an 8x6 or an 8x8 on that one? Mm, it's definitely 8 feet as, as wide as that yeah. awning. 8x6. Eight eight by by six. Six. Is that an 8x6? Yes. Okay. Yeah. okay, something like that. Yeah. I thought it was bigger, but. No, but that, you're right. You can get two cots on the 8x6. I've yeah. done that. The show and I fit in there, no problem. And Those the are pretty cool. I like that whole setup. Yep. Or if we are going and we're going to a campground for sure, we're going to have a hookup. We have a little. Uh, Forest River Nobo 10.6 toy hauler camper, which the big the back door folds down. We don't haul a quad or a motorcycle or anything, but it's nice to put the back door down and elevate it. Then you have a porch. There's a screen door in the back of that. It's got air conditioning. It's got a heat strip in the roof. It's got a fan. Uh, it's got a sink. It's got a domatic. It's... <laughs> Yes, yeah, so got I'll, lights. <laughs> I like the idea of turning kind of stuff. or having that porch. That's kind of cool. And w- with that set up there, it's easy to, of course, unhook from the trailer, leave that as a base camp, and then go explore for a little while. Uh, the other setup, you can do that. I have these quick release brackets from Iron Man 4x4 for the awning. And the awning, even if the room is zipped on, you can just lift it off there put a couple extra extendable poles and some guidelines and make it a cube tent right if you want to you need a few people to help you do that to get yeah. hold the thing up somebody drives the truck away secure the thing it is doable though right and that's a cool setup i like those so tyler, a different variety tyler what are you running uh usually if i'm just camping by myself i have just a tent and sleeping bag and just a little small clearing spot. I don't have all this fancy stuff you guys are talking about. <laughs> I just usually have a tent or a tarp or just something to keep me out of the rain. You know, and then if it's just me and the wife camping, then it's usually just a tent. But we haven't taken a little one out yet, though. Hmm. We're thinking of probably next year, but probably take her out camping with us. Start okay. getting into it again. Sounds good. Mikey? Uh, if I'm camping by myself, it's usually a hammock. And if I am camping with the Laura and the dog, then we are sleeping in the back of the truck. Which you have kitted out, and we'll get into yes, that. Yes, um, so. the truck has a soft topper canvas top on it, and we have the extended um, room for the soft topper, so it covers the tailgate with a bug screen and all that. Nice. Nicholas. Uh, my setup right now is very similar to Tyler's, what he's describing. If uh, the wife comes, it's usually just a whatever tent we have at the time because it seems like, I don't know, we either grow out of them or use them up. Uh, waterproofing breaks down, they get a hole, whatever. So we've, we've gone through a few tents. Uh, if I'm going solo, um, I still like ground sleeping quite a lot. I'm experimenting with a new hammock for me, uh, a Warbonnet uh, XLC. But for the most part, I I honestly still like just my blue closed cell foam pad and my bivy bag if it's rainy or cold. Otherwise, just keep it simple. Right on. Oh, Sam. Hmm. I started out ground tenting, and then I went to a hammock. Then I got a rooftop tent, and now I have transitioned into towing a trailer wherever I go, no matter who's with me. I think so, you've had the longest story arc of all of us. As well, far he as transitioned goes. for through those first three Tried on the it first all. Oh, yeah. night. Yeah, that was yeah. one night, and I was yeah, there. That was covered the night. most ground, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he had the largest leap from start to end. That's what I mean. But the yeah. shortest trajectory. There you to go. Get there. Yep, <laughs> that's it. Yep. There you go. Now he's running full kitted trailers. Yeah, stuff. I will never go anywhere without the trailer in my fridge. <laughs> Like now, having a fridge when I'm camping. Now, now for you guys that are thinking he's pulling a 20 foot uh, JC kind of motorhomey thing, that is incorrect. It's a 1952 M100 military trailer that we have modified to uh, take my tent and put some jerry cans on the front and somewhere to put the spare tire and, and a lid and a lid and the awning and all the stuff inside and. I think overall with the hitch extended in in the toe setting is 12 feet. 
Yeah, and, and if you guys are, like to go to campgrounds and talk to people, drag one of these things behind your truck because it is a conversation starter to the max. Especially when the lid's open and the yeah. tent's kind of Because they're like, w you Everybody sleeping that? Everybody has to ask how Don't you Don't you roll to in. one side? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it. I like to sleep in the corner. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. I've been with him, and, and the people come by and went, how do you sleep in that? Well, he puts it back flat first, you know. <laughs> Yeah, so nope, I've experienced the other it. three blowed right up. Yeah, that's it. So we all have uh, different degrees of camping. I'm sure we've all done a whole bunch of done uh, or different ways. I've done the bivy in the cold weather and nothing else. Uh, there, I mean, just about any way you want to go, you can go. But what we hope to do is is clue you in on some of the hacks that we have. I have a short list here, and I'm sure everyone has a few short lists that they want to go over and. Uh, we're going to tell you about our hacks, and some of them may overlap. Actually, quite a few may overlap because we camp together, and somebody, you know, Nick has a good idea. We go, oh, I'm going to start doing that, too. You know, it's, it's one of those things. So you may hear the same thing from each of us, but it'll give you an idea of, of the kind of uh, hacks that we go through. So who would like to start this round? <laughs> oh, look at those. Every one of those find, guys put their hand in the air. I don't have a lot if yeah, you want I to go not. first. I find that yeah. if you back your trailer in close enough to the power pole in your campground, yeah. your extension cord does not have to be very long. <laughs> wow, hack number one. Just bring a shore power. Foot, plug yeah. it in, plug it in. Hey, uh, you got to have good power for the fridge to stay cold uh, to keep your Well, I guess Sammy, food Sammy volunteered, so I guess you're starting. Go ahead, that was, That's all I got. That's, that's all, all he's got. got. Oh, I don't, see how this list is empty? Yeah. I'm waiting on he's you guys to talk the, so I can write, write them some down stuff down. Here. Who wants to start? Uh, Sam's advice is learn how to back a trailer. Yes, learn really how to back well. up a trailer by I'll yourself. I'll lead off this time if you want. Okay. Nickel, okay. nickel start, yeah. So I, I too, uh, was a little bit confused at first about what we were talking about as far as hacks went this morning. So uh, I tried to think of a few things that came to mind as, like, little tips and tricks like that. But, you know, I really, I don't know if it's because I haven't camped in a while, because it has been a while for me, or what, but... I couldn't think of any, like, little specific things. I, I don't know. So I, I put together a list of just stuff that helps me, you know, enjoy myself a little better. And, yeah, I decided to run with that. So the biggest thing for me was don't be afraid to improv. So if you have a problem or don't have a piece of gear, don't be afraid to try to come up with something to fill that need or that void for you. And... Uh, and that that's actually a really good tip because just like when we're talking to Tyler, he may not have all the stuff that Sam has, but he can still have the same experience and same good time right. thinking outside the box. Right. Right on. And like I've been backpacking with a few different folks and, you know, I've seen guys that carry a special strap just for hanging their pack off a tree. I've seen guys that come out with a piece of bank line or a piece of paracord and do the exact same thing. And you get the same, you know, same and result, result but all these different ways i saw one guy where he took a uh, a y section of a branch and make a hook out of that yeah you know, so th there's no like one right way to do these things it's it's whatever works and whatever is durable for you whatever you know what you're willing to carry what you're willing to know what you're willing to learn and, and definitely don't be afraid to apply that stuff because right. it, it makes you it can make or break your trip if you you know you uh, in your mindset absolutely you, that y branch idea that you're talking about i have seen people do that i personally have not tried that we've done the pot hooks and everything it i haven't done that like so much but just work. a I just mean... a piece of paracord to make a hook yeah if if you don't have carabiners i actually keep yep. enough carabiners to hang my pack so yep. yep for me i never had to do that but i did like the idea yeah the, oh the y it, branch it was cool yeah it just i don't know I, I think the gentleman that I saw doing it, he was very committed to bushcrafting. And I, right. I think he really enjoyed that. So for him, that worked out really good. Well, for me, I one usually piece of gear you don't have to line. carry in, though, too. You know, yep. you got to bang, you know, roll a paracord, throw it around a tree, stuff that up under one side of it and call it done. Yeah. And the same with, goes for, like, tent stakes and stuff. Because I've right. seen both where guys will buy, like, ultra premium titanium, you know, tent stakes. And then there's guys that won't bring any stakes and yep. will purposefully, you know, craft their stakes when they get to wherever they're camping. I used to do that. I, I know. Yeah. I messed around with that as well. And yeah, toggles, too, I for your hammer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Toggles, are, you know, Maybe don't carry to do toggles. You something with your fancy right. new LT right now as a bushcrafter. You got that right. <laughs> right on. And then right along with that, like, knowing, 
I, I love this one Morris Kachansky quote where the more you know, the less you carry. Yep. Wow. And it, it just, that always resonated with me. It makes so much sense. And I love learning all these different little things. And yeah, you know, it, it really is true. The less you carry. And I am a notorious overpacker because I like to try to think that, I can attest that he overpacks. I know, I know, I know. I'm saying this and preaching it, but like, I really do bring a lot of gear sometimes because I never know what we're going to be doing or whatever, and I like to be prepared. It's, it goes back to the Boy Scout days for me, and I just, I like. And to if make you don't sure believe it, listen to it. the uh, Everyday Carry episode. Oh, I'm terrible. The most weight of stuff. I do, I do. Yep. So, but right along with that, YouTube and. Morris Kachansky's books, Dave Canterbury's books, things like that. The more you know, the better off and the better time you have. But at the same time, I think you don't want to just be a book bushcrafter or a keyboard camper. You know, you want to make sure you actually get out in the field and do it. So, well, a, a good thing to do is like these hacks that work for you or work for me may not work for someone else. And the idea is this is just an idea to try it. Maybe you do or don't like right. what we're doing and you have a better way that suits you. Or, you know, that's the beauty of it. It might work on one trip, but not on another. So something that works when it's warm and rainy might not work when it's snowing out. And you don't really necessarily always know that until you get out and try it. Yep. Good plan. Um, a couple things that were specific is knots in particular. The more knots I know and then learn, I find using more and more and more ropes and more like just different things like that really has helped me on numerous occasions, whether it's cooking gear or stringing up my tarp for, you know, whatever, the more, you know, that way, the better. And having a little repair kit with me really helped get me out of trouble a couple times with a few different things. So it's like just a basic sewing kit and, you know, a sharpening stone and some oil and things like that makes a world of difference and a lot of times i see people don't really think about that it seems like they don't they don't think about maintenance necessarily they're like all decked out with their gear and especially new people you know they'll get their brand new boots and their brand new compass and they'll go out and it's like the as soon as something breaks they go home well that kind of sucks i mean that, that's a really good way to put a bad taste in your mouth as far as your trip goes Turns you, you can definitely turn people off at camping. Right on. But yeah. Uh, and then the last thing, well, two things, I guess. Keeping notes. I have a little notebook that goes with me everywhere when I go camping. And if I learn something or see something new that I really like, I either write it down, sketch it out real quick, something like that. And don't be afraid to take traditional techniques and either modernize them or use them so like in the bushcraft community a lot of times you'll hear about things like gum blankets and that's something that's been around since the civil war and it's just essentially a piece of canvas with rubber on one side and it keeps you insulated oh, from the gum, ground a little G -U -M. bit yeah okay i thought you said gun like no, G -U -M, no. bang bang okay gum blanket right yeah. gotcha 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 but now you see a lot of modern ultralighter backpackers using Tyvex in right. place, it, but it's doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. It weighs way less, but the trade-off is it's a lot less oh, durable. I am a fan yep. of the Tyvex. Yeah, 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 me too. And like Reflectex is another good example where it's an insulating layer mm -hmm. that's completely modern. I mean, it's essentially bubble wrap with mylar on it, but... Yeah, you know, it's a new technology doing an old job, keeping right. you insulated from the ground. Yeah, don't. So some people, and it's okay if you're going to go out and you're going to do this trip, and it's a bushcraft trip, and you guys are trying to bushcraft the whole oh, way. Yeah. I get it. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, if you're just out having fun, use the techniques. Let them bridge the gap between bushcraft and full-on glamping. Yeah, you know, have fun. The whole the whole point is to have a good time. For sure. I mean, for that, sure. That is it. Sammy and I and Elaine went on a kayak trip to to Seneca Lake here in Ohio, and they just redid the campgrounds. We had the absolute best time, and it was a, I guess a kind of glamping a little oh, bit for sure. Right? It Nothing was a wrong with that. If Sam's but involved, we, it's uh, glamping. We had a it was concrete, man. Was there a bathroom? There yes, was. there was a yeah. nice bathroom. a super bathroom. But glamping. wait, 
we walked to get ice cream at the camp store. Yeah. How can you? Well, you you know, walked. Yeah. You mean hiking? It wasn't that far. It wasn't but, that far. And it was all paid. But they had ice cream. <laughs> they had ice cream, and you could you know? sit and eat it on the beach. But we still count Sweet. it as a camping trip. So what yeah. I'm saying is, man, enjoy all levels. You can go hardcore. Yeah, there, are, there are definitely and, different tiers of yeah, camping. Yeah, man. And it's fun. It's all fun. We had a blast. Sure. We had an absolute blast. So good to go. But yeah. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more, really. I mean, as long as you're out there having a good time, don't let anybody tell you you're doing it wrong. Yeah, right on. I mean, yeah. So that's that was were some of the little just notes that came into my head about different things that make camping better for me. Good deal. And I like them. Mike, you want to take it from there? Yep. Um, for me, and I've kind of done all facets of camping at one time or another from straight up backpacking for weeks at a time to you know car camping overlanding all of it and super minimal stuff so uh, for me i think the biggest advice i can give to someone is organization uh, organize your gear know where your gear is pack it the same way every time you know that way when you get to where you're going if you have just a backpack you know where exactly where to reach for to get your stuff and keep your stuff together so like all your sleeping stuff is together in a bag or in a bin and your cooking stuff is together in a bin um, that way when you get to the campsite and it's raining and it's dark you pull out just what you need to get your shelter set up or your tent or your tarp or whatever and you can worry about the rest of the stuff when the weather's good um, so I think from that respect, it makes a lot of sense. And the way that we camp in the back of the truck, we have to load and unload the bed every night if you're changing locations. So having that organized and having every box serve a purpose helps us out because we're not bringing a bunch of extra stuff that we don't need and we don't have to unload a bunch of stuff that we're never going to use. So that type of organization and limiting the amount of stuff that you have, I feel, helps us. Nick, on the other hand, brings a box truck and just opens the door and then sets his camp up over Camp there. store. It, it, is, it does vary from trip to trip. Now, you have mostly only been with me when I do that. But yes. when I backpack, I do backpack pretty light. Yeah. I get my base weight down right in that 20, 25 pound range. Mm -hmm. Add the water and the food. I'm happy. I'm comfortable. I mean, I, I really, of all the forms of camping I've tried, and like you're saying, I, I probably have sampled at least every version of camping that I know of. I, I really think that backpacking is my favorite. Mm -hmm. Still, even after all these years. Mm -hmm. But yeah. You know, the overpacking aspect of it, though, don't get caught up in hating yourself or, oh, man, I'm taking too much stuff. Part of the fun is taking all that gear and seeing what you're going to use or using it and knowing you don't need to carry it next time. That is, to me, that's half the fun. Then of, it hits of the trade blanket. Yeah, I think exactly. That's <laughs> where you get your trade blanket. Right on. If you're just getting started, though, I think that is something you should definitely be aware of. And, and don't be and, afraid of it. Embrace it. Know that, yeah, you're yeah. going to go down that rabbit hole of gear one way or another, whether you spend thousands of dollars on a trailer and, you know, pop up or whatever, or, or whether you buy a really nice backpack or whether you go to the hardware store and buy a piece of, uh, what were we just Tyvek. talking about? Tyvex. Yeah. yeah. You know, you're going to go down that rabbit hole of gear and you won't know until you try it. It, it you know it's all okay how many of us in here have traded or bought gear that one of us <laughs> have tried off of each other <laughs> well that hand I, mean, I was talking about I, I know used to be I have some of your stuff. I've, had Scott's, I've had <laughs> sammy's i've had me and mike did a uh winter hammock cover this last trade yeah. remember you got my you know and uh, yeah, so I mean, we go through this like, oh, hey, yeah. this really worked for me, but it's not fitting the bill right this minute. Are you interested? And, and, and that's how we go through stuff. And that is a really, I guess that would be a great hack is to have have friends, yeah. have your camping buddies, you know, go to the REI near you or whatever you can find or get on Facebook and find a group. We're really fortunate here because we all like the outdoors. I mean, we're all that kind of guy. Mm -hmm. So we, we kind of, you know, are able to help each other out that way, but. 
definitely have have a core group of friends that you don't mind swapping gear with yeah. and trading with. That's actually a good hack we hadn't thought of, I guess. It, I've is got exactly Mike bringing me stuff right now <laughs> for, oh, to I'm try sure. out. Yeah, I, 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 mean, I got something how... in the truck for Nick and right now. Shameless plug for our <laughs> pout house. Yeah. Okay. So at LT Right Knives, you know, if you've listened to our podcast, we have the pout house. So on there, there are guys from all over the country, all over the world. And, and all different experiences and experience levels. And a ton yeah. of them like to camp. And they're constantly wheeling, dealing, swapping, and trading. And yes, I include myself on there. Nick has traded with every one of them. Uh, almost. <laughs> <laughs> I have a little scorecard. <laughs> um, but it's a great group. And uh, yeah. Yeah. It can definitely fill that void if you if you can't find that locally. Well, every piece of gear doesn't work for everyone. Something that you like, oh, yeah. I may not, and vice versa. So that's why I, I agree. That's a great hack, and I need to remember that as hacks go. So that's cool. Yep. Uh, the other thing for me, and Nick's kind of hinted on this, but practice camping. Don't just oh, yeah. go do it. Yeah, practice it. Find out what works, what doesn't work, what you do need, what you don't need. There's no rules that say you can't just camp in your backyard. Yeah, that was my first camping trip. Yeah. Was in my backyard, and it was one of the best memories I'll ever, I've, I've ever collected so far. Did, did George tell jokes? He did not, no. but it was it was like October or early November, and we got a little backpacking tent from Walmart back when they had like de- like it was an Ozark Trail tent, but it was when they were kind of decent. And that uh, happened. That we had a happened. long fire in front of the door. Sweet. It was great. It yeah, was that's just great. Cool. Like you said, the practice camping. I have eye hooks in my basement that I swing my hammock from that are far enough like a regular trees. Yeah. And I practice all my different setup. Like if you go out and you know, man, I had trouble because it was cold. I couldn't get this one thing to work right. And I will mess with it in my basement. It stays hung on my basement most of the winter, doesn't it? Yep. I just because I'm messing with this gear, changing out this a whoopee sling to a continuous loop. What do we loop, call it? Blah, tinkering? Blah, blah. Is that what we? Yeah, what we like call him it? and Andy call it tinkering. Messing about. He's, what are you doing, tinkering tonight? Well, he will tinker I from will. the time we get there oh. until we pack up camp when yeah, we leave. I, I, he I, will. I adjust stuff until we leave. You know, day hiking is really great for that too. Like if you're not, if you've never camped or you're maybe not ready or you're thinking about camping and you want to try it, you've gotten to that point where you maybe buy a tent or buy a hammock or whatever. Go out on a day hike and string up your hammock yep. or even set up your tent. I, most parks are, you know, they don't want you to camp off site usually. But if you just set it up for a few hours, even yeah. you'd probably be OK with that. And no, you get to try your gear. out. Absolutely. Me and my buddy, Carrie, and you guys all know, Carrie, we actually did like a, a little day hike in the snow in uh, Raccoon Creek State Park. Mm-hmm. And the simple reason was we wanted to have lunch in the woods. Honest oh, to I love that. I Seriously, love but that's the only reason we went. It was like, oh we, my gosh, we, yeah. Tr- you know, Trevor versed out into the wild, had lunch, came back. Yep. That was it. That was kind of fun. Uh, and to build on the practicing camping thing, uh, find a place where you can drive your car, full of your gear, and then walk 20 feet away and set up your primitive camp. And mm-hmm. then... You know, if you need something, it's there in your car, but you still can do your minimalist practice camping and still have that safety net. Yeah, it's a great safety factor. You're right. I wonder what that's like. Minimalist camping. Oh, I was going to say, what do you mean walking <laughs> from your car? You could have bought the Hummer trailer. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. You went you, small. You I love your trailer, though. It is literally less Maximalist. than 20 feet from us right now deployed and that thing is cool good deal mike you got anything else you want to throw on uh i think that's really about it okay sounds good moving on tyler what do you got uh i don't know too much about camping hacks but i do have some tips and stuff that you know would be always good for camping in deserts and wildlife areas (laughs) He, he, is our, hot he is our army guy. <laughs> Wildlife areas. Well, you know, always check your boots for putting them on. Always zip up your tent before you do this. Because I did it one time. I didn't zip up my tent. And uh, I woke up to a big old black snake sleeping right next to me. Yep, I'd have left that tent yeah, there. That's for sure. Really yeah, that would have been his tent, guaranteed. Yeah. And, and we uh, we went camping when I was a little bit younger. We went down to uh, 
Ohio pile uh, campgrounds and we forgot the cooler and stuff outside of the tent and well bears roamed through and ripped everything <laughs> oh. apart that is beautiful country though yeah. yeah so I mean as far as like camping hacks go definitely practice it for sure oh yeah when I hammock camp I go through everything before I climb in at night because you can't really seal it up Right. You're, you're right i'm, I'm on because I, I mean yeah. you have to and know where you're camping like don't just go out into the woods somewhere and expect to be okay because you never know spiders bite you you need to go to a hospital etc 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 i mean because yep. uh that happened to a buddy of mine one time he was an idiot went out camping with us <laughs> No, and, Tyler, tell us how he really was. <laughs> well, it's true, because he went out, and we were messing around in an old wood pile he found. And I told him not to not to go digging around in it. We'll just take stuff off the top. Well, he saw this piece down in the bottom of it that he really wanted. So he went down and got it and got bit by a rattlesnake. Oh, oh boy. Not good. So we ended up having to travel about... I don't know, 50, 60 miles to the nearest hospital to try to get some anti-venom just so he didn't lose his hand. So, I mean, the best way to do it is just know where you're camping. Know the a environment you're at. Never hurts. Uh, one time, I guess we'll have to do, like, scary stories that have actually happened to us episode. <laughs> While camping? Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> I might not want to camp anymore after that. I can't even think of anything bad that's happened to me camping. Maybe we'll put a little warning on that one. Well, you don't want it'll the be a camp short store episode. ran out of yeah. vanilla. Didn't you I, all I, a field I, on fire? I camping? found. I thought of the one <laughs> thing. <laughs> it's real quick. Oh. My nephew threw up in my tent one night. Oh, yeah. oh that was. Yeah. I was there. Bad. That was a funny one Wait, for was me. That, your <laughs> that was the my snake tent. Would have bothered okay. me. I'd have burnt that tent to the ground. Yeah. That was oh, rough. Yeah. The first time I went kayaking, like the very first time. In the kayak no, that I have in my house? No, no. This was a different kayak. This one actually fit me. No <laughs> joke. A water moccasin, like, right up to us. Oh, oh that was not fun. No, I've, I'm yeah, not a fan of the near aunt. shoulders. Mm, yeah. <laughs> oh. Uh, the nope rope. Yeah, yeah anyway. that's a whole lot of nope rope coming at you quick. Uh, Tyler, you got anything else to add? No, no not really. Not on that one, no. Okay. Well, that's some good, good advice. Good hacks there. Hey, Scott, your turn. I have a couple hacks. I see that. Hack it. Yep. Okay. Not not a ton, but <laughs> I see what you did there. What? If you if you've never heard of Scott's knots, you should oh. send him a message about it. Let's see your camping hacks. I have use your heat shield as a tent. Just a little pup tent. I so wanted to camp with just you know like that SOS survival kit you can hold in the palm of your hand. That's what I wanted to go camping with and just use that. So I did use the heat shield out of it as a pup tent one weekend. You mean like a Mylar space blanket? Yeah. Right? yeah oh, okay. Yeah, the, heat, the survival blanket. To keep heat yeah. Inside. Yep. Uh, take some fat wood with you for all kind of stuff. Tent pegs, fire starter wood, obviously. It can get wet. A little bit goes a long way. I always have some fat wood with me in the truck or in a bag or something like that. And obviously paracord for its many uses. I'm sure you know a bunch of those. Knots, just a small part of it. Rigging bridge lines and securing gear. And, you know, if you take it all apart, I have used it for dental floss once. And, you know, <laughs> just, a zillion just cordage uses. of any kind. is. I, I was about yeah. to say, I yeah. really jumped on the bank line train. Oh, you're not kidding. I mean, not because I dislike paracord, because I love it. Because, yeah, I'll do the same stuff where I take it apart and such. But the bank line is so cheap compared to the paracord. I mean, it I is, have some. Yeah, I can carry both that way. <laughs> I think and both. it's flammable. And it's flammable. And it doesn't stretch. But anyway. And I always also try to keep some paracord with me that one of the core fibers is that fire starter material, the uh, fire cord, I think fire they call cord, it, something yeah. like that, yeah. That's a good idea. Uh, and just those are just a couple hacks, but these three or four guys, let's see, what do I got here? One, two, three. These four guys, I have 
tried to learn stuff from or at least watched them over the years. And strangely enough, uh, three out of four have passed away, but still plenty of good intel, of course. And the first guy I ran across, and he has a fantastic DVD, this man's name was Gene Ward, and he passed away in 06. And he has a website, and I just now, while those guys were talking, tried to put an item in the basket to pay for it on PayPal. So somebody is still running his website, and you can still buy stuff. I think the website is Survival and Outdoor Safety with Gene Ward, W-A-R-D. And the DVD is Survival Beyond the Ten Essentials. It's a great video. A bunch of little pieces of good information kind of stuck all together on a DVD. That's one of the reasons I carry a Leatherman Wave, because that's the one he did, and he showed you some different things to do with it, and I thought it was very, very informative. Another one I watched early on was Ron Hood, who has passed away. Ron Hood and his, uh, his website is survival.com, and if you go to, I think it's called the Woodmaster Series of Videos, and DVDs, those are fantastic. I had one of them that was like a compilation of a bunch of different topics. I watched that one a bunch of times. Uh, Morris Kachansky, I think somebody mentioned. Fantastic wealth of knowledge. He's also passed away. And uh, last but not least, I've got some very good info from Dave Canterbury. He has a great website, lots of good DVDs. I think one or two books, or maybe more now. I don't know. I can't keep track. Up to but four. Yeah. Oh, four? Okay. Yeah. Got some the books advanced out. Yeah, got good was really good. Dave is a huge wealth of knowledge, of course. And while we were selling knives and here and there at a couple of events, I got to hang out in, in the back of the class and some of Dave's stuff. And super, super informative. And as far as knots go, uh, if you check out some old issues of Survival or uh, Self Reliance Illustrated. I had a knot article in every one of those, if you can find them. And uh, Backwoods Survival Guide, there's a knot article in there. Mm -hmm. Lots of good stuff. You should definitely have five or ten knots in your brain. Memorize that you can pull off, no problem. Okay, if, like, you, if, if you're not going to waste the time to do that, like, I'm, I'm not. Yeah, take me with you camping. One, what are your five no, knots? No. What is <laughs> one knot you can't live without? Bowline. Okay, so I can pretty much do what i need to do if i know a bowline it's it's helpful okay it's helpful and, and just I know for this just, ah, just for this it. article that i wrote uh one of the ones i picked was a clove hitch and i've used it and mainly just for tying a guy line to a tent peg but i ran across a little bit different info on a clove hitch and how it can be used for securing yourself to a tree or some sort of climbing aspect of it and i never thought about that before never needed it i guess i included that in the article because it was super super helpful mm -hmm. there was a bunch of stopper knots that mm -hmm. i used in there those can be helpful camping yeah, i like stopper knots the uh bowline and the trucker hitch those are in there trucker hitch is probably my most used i See, gotta be honest before i started camping with you For guys sure. and i'm talking yeah. back when we used to go to pwyp years ago i i had known what that was but i I used it so rarely that Which I had almost hitch? forgotten about it. The trucker hitch. Oh, oh. my gosh. I use that and every time. I now I, I have integrated Seriously. it and into I, a lot I more I think of the trucker stuff. hitch yeah. version I use is not the one that I see mainly. It, it works for me. You tie a, a loop in the, you know, standing into the cord. You run it down to your tie out, back through the loop, and pull it on. You have a two-to-one mechanical advantage. You can tie stuff down. You can really, if you want or need to, pull trees together with this it's quite strong. And See then it? if you want to tie another one at the other end and pull it back the other way, yeah, you can yeah. really move some stuff. This is a very strong knot. I love the trucker's hitch. Right on. Yeah. So knots are a huge useful thing uh, for hacking different things together or just for helping you set up camp. Or lashing stuff to the roof rack of your Tacoma or, you know, all kind of stuff. Very yeah. useful. But check out those those guys. I really like. I haven't watched it in a while now. I, sh I got to dig it out. The Gene Ward DVD, the Ron Hood stuff. I know Dave has DVDs, and I had one uh, with Moore's in it, and I think I loaned it to a buddy. And I haven't seen it since, but they all have very handy info, and they're probably all on YouTube or at least parts of them by now. But very handy. That's it for hacks. Oh, okay. 
No, those are really good. I agree with the knots, but I like the idea if you got to learn one, one or two, because I, I just don't want to sit down and do. A, I can't. It's not that I, pro I probably have learned ten, but I forgot a lot of them. I do yeah, the stopper sure. knot. I do the figure four. I do the, the necklace one. What's that with a stopper on this? Surgeon's knot. Fish. Surgeon knot. I do that. But the trucker's or hitch. Fisherman's knot. Yeah, truck way, slip knot. Way. My gosh, I use that all the time in a trucker's yep. hitch. Just like crazy all the time, everywhere. They're just yep. too stupid easy to, to not use, yeah. So I do that. It's it's good to, for camp things, too. You're sitting around a campfire, be yeah. with your buddies, pull out the paracord or the rope, and Absolutely. practice. Absolutely. That's it how is sailors great, got so you know, good on boring <laughs> boat rides. Yeah, you just sit there and practice your knots. No, I, yeah. I like that idea for sure. It was really fun yeah. in the, again, in the Boy Scouts, we used to do shuttle relays. Where you would run up, tie it. You had to tie the knot and do it correctly, and then you would run back, tag the next person. That oh, really cool. was one of those exercises that hammered home how to do it right because, yeah, they didn't let you go until you tied it right. Yeah, you didn't want to bring the team down. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Right on. Well, I I've got a handful of hacks here too. Um, I might have kind of covered a bunch of angles here though, but that's that's okay. Uh, anything from one of the main things I think you need to know how to do is keep yourself warm. Even in the summer, you can get wet, you can get cold. So warming your sleeping bag. Now, I don't do this in the summer, but any fall or winter camping, I do uh, put the hot water. You know, I carry a stainless steel jug to drink out of, boil the hot water, put it in the bottom of my sleeping bag. I also carry those hot hands that you break yeah. and, and they warm things. So if I know I'm going to go to bed in 30 minutes or so, I'll just walk past my hammock, throw one or two in there, and then just uh, go back to doing what you're doing until it's time for bed. And believe it, that little bit of chill taken off makes a huge difference. Huge difference. Uh, I'm a big fan of sock rotation. I rotate mm -hmm. my socks all the time. Even if I'm warm, before I go to bed, I change into a fresher pair. Now, that fresh pair could have been the ones I wore yesterday, and they hung all night, you know, over the, the cord of my hammock or something. But sock rotation, keeping your feet dry, that's huge to me. Um, camp chair liners, if you're taking a camp chair, oh, I, like carry, I carry the Camp Craft Outdoors utility mat. Oh, I yeah, love yeah, that thing. It's, cool. Now, here's where it comes like threefold. One is it's great for the, your rear end in, in your camp chair around camp. Keeps you dry, Two, too. Yeah. Standing on it oh, to keep like your feet from, yeah, to get the convection. Yeah, gotcha. you know? yeah. And mm. then the third one is, and this is a hack I got from Shug, and Shug is the hammock guy. Uh, if you if guys you haven't know, watched his videos, <laughs> I was Shug's talking about YouTube earlier. Shug yeah. Emery. Oh my gosh! Is what a wonderful Michigan? YouTube uh, channel. Oh, he's up north, Minnesota, Michigan. He's yeah. up north. It's always cold there. Yeah. yeah, he is the man for cold hammock camping. And he, but, yeah, he does. But a lot his of hack was to take this and put it in the bottom of your sleeping bag, and put your feet on it just for a, one little more layer of insulation. Yeah. So that utility mat is like threefold. Plus, I'm sure I can have multiple more things to do with that. But it is definitely something that I use. It is in my camp chair right now. I keep it folded up in there, <laughs> there so I don't forget it. There's no way. Uh, another thing that I found quite helpful is nobody wants to drag a pillow along for camping except Sam. So if you don't, I do. I, I, I do I that might too. Actually, <laughs> I can't do that. Mine, I do that mine too. Stays in yeah. Yeah. I, I just use my pack as no. a pillow. Yeah, I used see, to well, do I, that. I did that, but yeah. here's what even works better for me now is I'm I carry my sleeping bag in a stuff sack and cinch it all down. So I take it out and then I grab the clothes that are in my backpack, put it in the stuff sack, and now that's my pillow. So I'm kind of two folding and thing. Yeah. I have this really awesome Thermarest pillow. I was and about it to stays say, in yeah, the I'm stuff gonna, sack gonna, with my sleeping bag. I cannot bag. force myself to, to carry that extra phone. piece One, of gear. No, nope, honestly, so stuff, I went you stuff don't sack even pillow, it. man. Yeah, I went into an outfitter shop in Gatlinburg. And I found one of those Thermarest pillows, and I haven't For looked sure. back since. I got a so. couple of them. It packs down to like that. That yeah, much. I, maybe I, I might look at one, but maybe not. I don't know. And this works I for you guys that don't want to buy it. I have recently. <laughs> it's a good hack, though. Especially included the pillow in my hammock. Right. Oh yeah, I've always pillowed in the well, hammock. Like, for a long time, I was stuff sack. No, but now it's like it's just enough. And okay. It, well, that's that. Yeah. No, I'm not going to say no. I got to look at them. I guess. Um, we were talking about doing knots around the fire, mm -hmm. like uh, while you're messing around. Uh, I'm going to bring this up. 
one reason is because Sammy and I did this on our winter trip this year is while we're sitting around during the day and, and you're not doing something important, we're making our fire starters. We were making our tender bundles and tying them with jute cord oh. and taking the jute. And we made multiple bird nests. And we spent the afternoon chatting. And while we're just sitting there chatting, when you know, we're just making up our fire stuff. That is a great hack. Sit there and practice making bird's nests with jute. Worst case scenario, you throw it in the fire and it burns up, you know. Mm-hmm. It, but it's still, like Mike said, that practice, practice, practice. We're is always good. making feather sticks all afternoon. Oh, yeah. We sit there and make, make them with your knife, make them with your hatchet, and just practice your feather sticks. That's a blast. That's an absolute good time. Something that I've done starting this year is I am multiple using my Wooby. I have it now set up as a just regular throw it around your blanket. And I have cut the ends of the seams on each end and put um, shock cord all the way through it. I fed it all the way through it. And I put some of those plastic keepers on it that you can cinch it up with. And it has now become a under quilt and an over quilt kind of thing, depending on how I'm going to do it. I actually do have an under quilt, but if it's stupid, stupid cold, I can double my under quilt or pull my wooby up around and cinch it down on top of my hammock. That mm-hmm. will be, and it's one of those things. It's like, I have this piece of gear. I carry it with me. Let me get this thing in a multi-use thing. You mean just an army poncho? Yeah, right? army poncho yeah. liner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Liner. The insider yeah, the liner. Yeah. And, and the way they seamed them up, is you just literally take a razor knife, slit the end, and you can start feeding the cord. Mm-hmm. It was amazing. In, in 20 minutes, I had this thing that I can cinch up around each end of my hammock and pull it as tight as I want in between. I think there's a bunch of hacks just for that item out there. Oh, oh I'm gosh, sure there yeah. is. Yeah. I but mean, the man, ranger roll all by itself. For using this for uh, cool. for, yep. for using it for an underquilt or, and or overquilt, I, that is one of my favorite things to be doing. Um, when I... When I take coffee, I usually jet boil stuff. And I have mentioned in another podcast sitting in my hammock and jet boil in my morning coffee uh, like sugar. Breakfast from the hammock. It was, it was a sugar kind mm-hmm. of thing. But I carry my coffee pre measured in some old things I got off of Nick. Um, they were undeveloped Pepsi bottles. You, what the heck? Oh, uh, they, they look like a baby test pop tube. bottles. Yeah. Baby pop bottles. You can find them. I forget the website off the top of my head, but it's an unexpanded two-liter pop bottle. So right. it looks like a vial. Yeah, it looks like a test they are, tube. They are They're fantastic. super handy for anything. The beauty of that is, is one of those keeps my best one thing of coffee for yeah. me. And they so are I basically have, indestructible, too. Yeah, I carry one of those for each day, and I don't have to worry about trying to dig out coffee. Good to go. You just pour it in so your that, lip like chew. Yeah, yeah no. <laughs> See, no, I, no, I, no. for coffee, I have... I have gone full sug. I found at our local Kroger, that's our grocery store around here, they have Medagliadoro Instant Espresso. That's it. Oh my gosh, oh my so gosh, good. Those are expensive. Or yeah, they're not oh, cheap. No, well, it's for. Uh, I think I traded they, Nick a big lighter for a couple of them. Anyway, the pot, if you the look on bottles. Amazon, it's called Soda Bottle Preforms and Caps. There oh, are other websites fantastic. where you can oh, this find is them cheaper. No. Oh, man, they are nice. This is 30 more? of them for 26 them. bucks. <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. 30 of them. Yeah, like a buck, less than a dollar a piece. Yeah, yeah. That looks uh, handy. You want to get them? I'll go in and with you if you want to okay, get them. Okay, probably. On that one yeah, website, you can buy them in packs of 15, 30, and 60, I think. Okay, okay. we'll check them out because I would that definitely take yeah. some more. They're, they are super handy. Salt and pepper, too. You name it. Man, oh, they're they're test yeah. tubes with a lid. Yeah, they're well, great. That was the thing. I think you know a lot of a people use them lid. for like science experiments. And they're, in school. they're not expanded. They're super thick. Man, yeah. I don't know. You'd have to beat them with a sledgehammer. to. Oh, well, I don't think you really could break them. They're amazing. There's so much plastic there. The cat so I, would I, I do my coffee yeah. and hot chocolate for that matter, you know, that way because yeah. it's just super handy. I wonder if somebody makes one with graduation marks on it. Oh, uh, no, we'll laser. We can laser yeah, it laser. on there. We'll laser. That's right. We'll laser it on there. Laser. It's not a bad so idea. You, you could take like a, a shot glass or one of those little measuring glasses right. and, and actually measure it and, and mark it on there. Don't hate that idea. You could use tape. Look at that. Come yeah. up with a hack. There you go. Sweet. We just hacked the hack show. Oh, hack snap, son. Right on. Uh, pre-pep, pre-prepped food, and not necessarily bagged stuff that you buy already done. Um, my wife started doing bake oatmeal. She got oh. that from Nicole 
I'm Elix. sorry. That reminded me of something, though, when you said your wife, because she did the egg thing in the jar. Yeah, that was oh, it. It's on my, my list right okay. here. Yeah. When you get to that one, that's such a good one. Oh, it's great. But she makes baked oatmeal, cuts it in squares, puts it in a Ziploc bag. Me, her, and Sammy had it at our last trip. And it's stupid easy and fantastic, great. Fantastic. Hot or cold. Oh, yeah, that one. one. That is a way to get a good breakfast without much cleanup or much prep time. The other thing is the eggs in a container. Put them in a Pepsi bottle. It doesn't matter. Just yeah. find an old orange juice bottle. Pre-break your eggs. Yeah. Save no and put them in a plastic bottle with a lid. They won't spill. It doesn't matter if they get shook up and you're walking. And they're that less is likely to freeze. That was one yeah. of my favorite parts is because there have been campouts where it was so cold, even in the cooler, the eggs started to freeze. And if you've never cracked semi-frozen eggs mm-hmm. when it's super freaking cold out, to try and get your breakfast going when you're still half asleep, do oh, this yeah. and you will make your life happier. Yeah. Or just eat hard boiled so eggs. So they're eggs. Or hard frozen eggs. <laughs> hey, and and another hack, and, I, and a lot of people already know this, but get baby wipes. My gosh, is that so easy and stupid to have with you? Oh, for some, sure. Some freaking baby wipes. Okay, Dollar store baby wipes, dude. They don't have to be anything fancy or smell good. Just something you can wipe your hands off, get the duck poop out of your eyes, you know, whatever, just clean uh, yourself. Just because we did the COVID thing, there's, you know, baby wipes and there's like for sure bacteria killing, you know, germy wipes. The wet ones. Yeah, definitely look into that. Depending on what you might want to do with it. And they're so small, they pack down. No, No reason not to have them. Another hack that I have found the hard way. Flip your batteries and your headlamps and flashlights. <laughs> flip them, just flip them around. Leave them in there. When you get where you're going, unflip them. How many times have but we gone to the farm? You're so and good I, about pulling out your flashlight and the batteries being dead. I know, and I even <laughs> I'm pretty good at flipping them, but I forget <laughs> sometimes. And then uh, you and know I what do I that. for for things I keep in the truck, I bought some of those little plastic battery isolators yep. off Amazon. I use them as well. Headrest bags from Blue Ridge. Mm-hmm. I keep double A, triple A, the CR one two threes in Oh yeah, that's no, that's idea. a great idea. That you got to have spares with you. Yep. Uh, or, the, or and and, and like this will be my last one for today. I have other ones, but this one, have a checklist. I cannot tell you. We have a farm yeah, checklist when we leave to shut up, and we rarely miss something. Having a checklist. How many? How many people at this table have got somewhere and went? Son of a gun! I forgot uh, my. Every I would say trip. all of us. That's probably yeah. why we have our checklist. That's why it's a checklist. <laughs> why so we you know what? And again, all of us have iPhones. They got a note thing. We use any list, mm-hmm. uh, it's, which is an app. Easy to use. Just make a checklist. Believe me, you will love it. And we'll, it'll save you some time. So. All right. We need to transition mm-hmm. over to Bushcraft Shelter. Uh, I don't know if we even have time. Look at our yeah. time. We're running right, we'll almost at an hour. Say your favorite Bushcraft Shelter. My what? Your favorite bushcraft shelter. Shelter? Yeah. I can't count a hammock. <laughs> no. no. Unless you bushcraft your hammock. Got a uh, I'm going to say a lean-to is probably my, my favorite because I've actually done that one. And it's kind of stupid simple. So That's mine as well. Yeah. Ditto. Lean-to, tree boughs on it, and don't forget to... Set a small fire ablaze inside and watch the bugs and critters run out of there for their lives. And, and <laughs> what did you, it, w- w- Scott built one one time and we were just kind of hanging around watching what was going on. He made uh, a candle in a tuna fish can, I think, is where you started something your fire like or something yep. like that. Put it inside this, and I'm not kidding you, you could hear the critters going, Because after you've cut no all the branches kidding. down and made your shelter, they're, they're in yeah. there still. Oh, yes, it was amazing. I, saw that. I think I it was, was amazing. That might have been a Dave Canterbury video or something. That might Light have been. a small fire inside, let it smoke up, and they run for their yeah. lives, and then you can sleep in there. Not have things crawl up your nose. <laughs> it was crazy, but it worked. <laughs> uh, Tyler? Uh, I'm going to have to go with lean to or even the uh, TP if you get the materials to make it long sticks and canvas, because then you can put the fire inside. And go. it would keep you warm and keep the bugs out at the same time. Yep. Nice. Mike? For me, uh, the tarp is the ultimate bushcraft accessory because you can do hundreds of various shelters with tarps. Well, I would have went tarp, but I thought we had to have a bush. Yeah, I thought this had to be bushcraft. Yeah, I was thinking it was specific There's enough ones. bushcrafters okay. that use tarps. Now, oh, I would, 
Well, then I'm going to go back and say I would use a tarp first. <laughs> yeah, right on. Nick? Or, uh, oh, you already I went. said, yeah, with you. Sammy. Sam hasn't gone. Uh, what about a rooftop tent with a diesel <laughs> heater? Yeah. <laughs> Does that count? That well, is an option. No, no memory option. foam, though. No memory. Yeah. Well, then I'm not going. <laughs> All right, there you Wait, have is it. your bushcrafter knife on your hip? Uh, sure. Then, that, then it's if okay. that makes it work, okay, then he's yeah. got the sticker sticker <laughs> yeah. on the side of the trailer. I, it says I bushcraft, like, and then it's got ha ha ha. Yeah. I've seen wood. less like equipped houses. I know th than hey, what you guys have. Sometimes I am this king at overpacking. That's why I now have a trailer because the right. truck was Wait a so minute. heavy. You think you overpack more than me? Uh, I have a trailer now. You did today. I surrender. Your trailer is your trunk. Yeah. Yeah, but I still put stuff in the truck. You know, know it's sad you... when I said to him, well, "Why don't you just carry the spare tire inside? There's plenty of room." And he goes, "No, because then I can't take as much stuff." Mm -hmm. So he made him out. I surrender. Yeah. Sam officially overpacks more than hey, me. Hey, one. Yeah. Sorry, one more. I just thought of this quick thing since you mentioned tarp. That Gene Ward survival video. He goes over a bunch of stuff on how to use clear plastic garbage bags and zip ties. Uh, mm. and make That's shelters. interesting. I might have to watch that. He makes like walls. That. He makes a whole tent. All kind of really good stuff. Right on. Right. Sounds That's good. All. Well, hey, guys, we are out of time today. We hope you have a great summer. We hope that some of these uh, camping hacks that we went over can help you, too. Remember, what I do doesn't work for you, maybe, or what Nick does doesn't work for you, but you might find some of these. Blend everything together and come up with some things and modify the ones we talked about, and they will work great for you. Between As, the six of us, you might have learned something. Yeah, and it all may, ends yeah. with buy a trailer. And Sam still has nothing written down on his paper because he, he's not going to hack anything. He's, he's Step one, buy a trailer. Yeah, buy, buy a trailer. trailer. Step it's, two, it's, put it's a fridge in it. So, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. Check out our knives at www.ltrightknives.com. If you have any questions, you can email Mike because he's got an email. I do. <laughs> or where, where can they reach the podcast? Uh, probably best to email me, Mike H at ltrightknives.com. Thank you for tuning in. We are uh, number one in some country somewhere. We're sure of it. So <laughs> thanks for listening, and we hope to bring you another one soon. Don't forget, you're going to want to be around Halloween time because we got a haunted uh, episode planned. All right, guys, thank you very much. Have a great day, and God bless you. See you. Bye. Bye. Bye.